Well, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And this is part seven of our HE16282 Salamander by Tamiya and 148 scale. And in this video, we're going to be doing uh, the pilot. I know some of you don't like pilots. I don't particularly like painting figures myself, but uh, we get better by practice. So we're going to go ahead and do the pilot up. And uh, also we're going to do some weathering on our engines, uh, those nozzles. Uh, need a little bit of treatment, so we're going to try to do some heat and rust treatment on that. And we're also going to make a little vignette. I know, right? First for the channel. Um, sort of set the uh, aircraft in a little bit of context here. I think in the last video I said content. So, well, you have to forgive me. I'm a hillbilly. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. So the very first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to clean off our workbench here a little bit. And let's take a look at our instructions. Now this is the little guy that we're going to be working on. Uh, we need to paint up this pilot. But as you can see here, all these color callouts are, the greatest majority of them anyway, is uh, a satin black and a flat black. And well, it's black on black and black and more black. So. Uh, we're probably going to change that up a little bit, uh, add a little gray in there, uh, just so uh, uh, the pilot isn't so dark down inside the cockpit there, and easier to see. It's a little bit of uh, artistic uh, license, I think, <laughs> that we can do here, and make the pilot a little bit more visible. Now, before we get started, I think it's probably a really good idea to check the pilot and see if this little guy is actually going to fit in the cockpit. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and see if we can get him in there. And I am having trouble with my tweezers, of course. Um, but uh, we didn't check uh, the fit to make sure that uh, he would sit down inside the cockpit. So we need to check that now before we spend a lot of time painting on him and then only have him to not fit in the cockpit. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, he looks good. So we're going to go ahead and paint him. So now to get him ready for painting, uh, we need to clean up this seam line that goes all the way around the figure, of course. And that's the kind of thing that you have with figures that come in in these kits. Especially the older the kit is, usually the worse uh, these uh, seam lines are. And I'm just going to use my number 11 hobby knife here and just kind of scrape away uh, that seam line and get him nice and smoothed out. And that way uh, it won't show up, hopefully, <laughs> when, we, when we go to paint him. Uh, we don't need anything that's going to grab paint in a way that would make that figure not look uh, the way that we really want him to look. Now we're going to go ahead and use blue stick uh, and this is just a pliable type putty uh, that's a little bit tacky and we're going to just pull us off a little piece of it here and there is a void that is in the back of our pilot which of course you can't see when the pilot is in the seat anyway and I'm just going to put it there and use a little bit, uh, or use rather, a cocktail stick uh, to uh, uh, hold it in place. That'll make it easier to paint. So we're going to go ahead and paint him up with this Vallejo Black pr uh, Surface Primer. And of course, I do go in and mix this for my airbrush with a little bit of the Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. And that'll make it easier to spray and to apply to the figure. Now once we have him primed up in black, uh, we're going to use this Tester's Enamel Paint here. Now this is a gray and uh, a little bit of thinner. And we're going to do some dry brushing to kind of pull out some of those details over that, that black figure. Now his uniform is supposed to be black and the collar is supposed to be black. and Well we're going to kind of try to lighten that up a little bit uh, to accentuate the, uh, the detail that's actually on this little bitty, very small figure. And I always like to moisten the brush first and then load it up with the enamel paint. That way it's easier to apply. And here, as always, with uh, dry brushing, we unload most of the paint. 
Now I want to go crossways uh, over the folds in the clothing and the details. That way we're just catching the edges. We don't really want to paint the figure. We just want to dry brush over that to help pull out uh, those little details. And it also has the effect of uh, allowing us to be able to see these details better. So when we go to paint like the harness straps and uh, all the little uh, items that are different colors, uh, we can see them much better since uh, we now have uh, some more definition there on the different parts that's on our pilot. So we're going to be using craft paints for this. Now this is skin tone and it is a neat as acrylic water-based uh, paint. And these craft paints are really inexpensive. So I'm just going to thin it just a very little and make sure that it's well mixed. We don't need very much of this. Uh, matter of fact just like three little dots <laughs> but uh, uh, we need to make sure that it's going to uh, flow for us uh, really well and so we need to get this little bitty piece of skin that's supposed to be visible here between uh, the, the goggles on the forehead so we'll go ahead and get that little dot in there I'll have to come back in and touch that up some and uh, also we're going to go ahead and do his cheeks and that's really all that's visible uh, on the pilot as far as skin goes. And I do come back in with a little bit of black once this dries and kind of clean that up a little bit because these are really small areas and really hard for me to paint anyway. <laughs> so next we're gonna use some gray. We really wanna try to add a little bit more detail uh, rather than everything just being black. So I'm gonna use this gray uh, craft paint here and I'm going to paint his parachute with this gray uh, that way it'll be more visible down in the cockpit and so we'll just do the the back area and then down the sides uh, of the figure as well and that keeps everything from being just black on black The next color we're going to use is going to be this craft paint latte. <laughs> yeah, I like saying latte. Hmm. You think I'm ordering coffee of some kind. But anyway, it's very, very close to the color of the seat belts that we installed, uh, the seat belt decals that we installed in the aircraft. And uh, it's a good representation of uh, the Tamiya deck tan. So it's a good substitute for that. And so we're going to paint up his harness. Uh, with this uh, real light latte color and that really stands out against that black uniform. So the next color we're going to use is going to be this blush brown and this is also a craft paint as you can see and we're going to use this to paint the fur col uh, collar <laughs> if I can say it right his collar on his jacket and that'll add more color. Now the instructions call for a flat black here, but I think maybe a brown fur color collar will, will look much better. And now we're into warm brown, which is what we're gonna to use to uh, simulate the leather that is on his helmet. And we're just gonna carefully paint in uh, that brown, and that'll give us some more color contrast there for our pilot. And I did use a little bit of flat steel for his goggles. Uh, just two little dots, which I actually applied with a toothpick. And you can see his goggles there. And we used the gray also on his uh, boots a little bit. So we are going to take and clear coat this with the Gloss Clear X22 once everything has completely dried for us. And you can see how that clear coat really brightens up everything. But that's okay. <clears throat> um, because once that clear coat is fully dry, we're going to do a little bit of uh, detail here with the panel liner. And this is to me a black accent liner. Uh, it is an enamel based product. That's why we use the acrylic clear coat so that these uh, two types of paint don't interact with one another. And I'm just using the brush that's in the bottle to apply it and get it into all those little 
nooks and crannies and crevices and yeah it looks a mess but that's all right uh, we're gonna let that dry a little bit and then we're gonna come back in with our testers enamel thinner because the panel liner is an enamel based product and we're gonna start brushing over it now you don't want your brush uh, you know sopping wet <laughs> with the uh, enamel thinner just just very very uh, lightly damp I guess is what I'm trying to say and we're taking off the panel liner and this will happen because the brush will go across all of the race surfaces and uh, leave the panel liner into the deep crevices and that'll help clean up any little jagged lines that we have uh, from painting our uh, straps you know our harness and everything on the figure and kind of smooth everything out for us and that really helps, especially since he has a black uniform. Now, once we get the figure looking just like we like him, and I think he's looking pretty good there. Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll do. So we want to make sure that everything dries really good. And that's because the final step for our pilot here is going to be spraying him with this Model Master Acryl Flat Clear. And that's going to seal everything in and then give it a nice flat uh, appearance there. And once that's dry, this is what our pilot looks like. So yeah, he looks pretty good. And now we can go ahead and remove our cocktail stick or toothpick and then that blue stick, that tacky putty that we used uh, to attach that. And uh, now he's ready to go into the aircraft. So let's just take a quick look here and see what he looks like setting down inside the aircraft. So I'm going to carefully place him down inside there, making sure that I don't knock any parts loose like the uh, joystick or the rudder pedals. And there's our pilot. Very nice. All right. I like it. So now we're going to focus on these engine nozzles. Uh, there's going to be a lot of heat there, and uh, we kind of, you know, when, when metal cools, it's going to rust, and also there's going to be some discoloration. Now, this is Vallejo pigments. These are dry pigments, and it comes in a set, uh, and we have all different kinds of rust. New rust, light rust, and then uh, the darker stuff, the old rust, and then we also have... Uh, iron oxide color which works really good for uh, soot. Now you can see here that I've arranged it in this little paint palette and I have all my different colors and we can just pick from this uh, uh, while we're applying it and <laughs> whichever color that I decide to use first and we'll start off with a darker rust color. Now applying dry pigments can be a little bit well messy uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use an old brush and some water here uh, and the water is our carrier and so it's pretty simple to do. Uh, this is a technique that I like to use. That way I have a lot of control over these pigments and we're just going to add a little water uh, to our dry pigment and get us a little pigment slurry going there. <laughs> and then we're just going to start painting it on. Now I'm starting about in the center, somewhere around the center, more or less, of the, uh, the actual nozzle. And then we advance to a little bit lighter color. And we will apply this just below, uh, towards the end of the nozzle, um, uh, below the uh, previous pigment. As you can see, we got gradients that are lightening up. And we'll just keep going around. And then we'll go ahead with the next lightest color that we have here. And that'll be our final color because it's going to rust the fastest. Um, you'll get your new rust or your lighter uh, colors uh, going on there at the very end. Now it doesn't look like much right now. We have to wait for this to dry because once that water dries off, uh, all those colors will really, really uh, come out. So we're going to use a semi-stiff brush here. And uh, once this is completely dry, we can start blending these pigments. 
And as you can see here, I'm just using a little stippling and brushing kind of method here. Uh, kind of blending in these colors a little bit. And we're just going to go all the way around and blend this in. And as you can see here, uh, this is kind of the effect uh, that we've got going on. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, you don't want it uniform. You want it kind of splotchy. And that's definitely splotchy. <laughs> so uh, we're going to use the iron oxide, which is a really black color. And again, uh, water as our carrier. And we're going to come in around that nozzle, that center. Uh, I guess it's a, like a flame spreader uh, for our nozzle. And uh, once it's dry, we will take and do the same treatment to it and kind of blend it a little bit in with the part. Now that we've got our pigments on and they're completely dry, uh, the next thing that we need to do is we're going to try to set uh, these pigments in place. And I'm just going to use enamel thinner for that. Now this will help those pigments uh, kind of bond to that uh, flat painted surface. Uh, it's not a clear coat because I have learned that when you put clear coat over these pigments, uh, they tend to fade out on you. So this will keep it from flaking off, uh, but it will not stand up under real heavy use, but that's okay because we don't plan on handling it very much. <laughs> And once uh, we get this on, we're going to want to let that dry completely. And as you can see, once it's dry, uh, those colors come back. And that looks really good. Uh, now all we have to do is do the nacelle, uh, which is our other engine assembly, uh, for the top of the aircraft. Now we're going to turn our attention to our little vignette or display base. And I'm going to be using this uh, five inch by seven inch uh, picture frame. Now this is just a square picture frame. Uh, what I want to do though is I want to make sure uh, that the area is large enough to display uh, the components of our model kit here, the, uh, the, the aircraft and the engine as well. Now when it comes to these little picture frames, uh, you can get them in multiple different colors, or if you would like, you can actually paint it any color you want. So I think this size is going to work very well for us. So we're going to use that. So the first thing we need to do is disassemble our frame. So we have these bend over tabs here, and we'll just bend those up out of the way. We'll pull the back uh, piece off. Now we won't need the glass, or of course that little... Uh, advertising uh, paper that's in there. Set our frame aside. The metal clip for hanging, we're not going to need that. And then of course the stand which is attached with two little uh, aluminum rivets. Uh, we don't need that stand either. That's going to get in our way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my to me a handy drill here and which is not really for metal but since it's aluminum uh, it's not a big deal. And we're just going to drill out the centers of these. And as you can see here, uh, that little ring will come right off. And uh, we'll be able to remove that stand uh, from this backing card. Because that backing card, we're going to use that. And we're going to need that piece. So once that is removed, we can just discard the... Uh, 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 the stand <laughs> and we won't need that so next up we're going to use this green guard project panel now this is some uh, insulating foam that I got at the uh, big box hardware store uh, it's usually used for um, insulating garage doors and it's a high dense foam it's about 15 16 of an inch or uh, what 24 millimeters, something like that thick. So I just need to find me a piece of it uh, that's going to be large enough uh, for our project. And so I will have to cut a strip out of this. So using the frame as my reference uh, for my width, I will just draw a little line there. 
and then we can we got a good uh, reference there for uh, how wide of a strip we need to cut out of our foam and using our reference line I'm going to use this metal ruler here to line that up and for cutting I'm going to use this disposable utility knife here uh, of course I'm going to cut this off camera because this is a rather large piece so I'll get this initial cut done first now once it's cut to width I'm going to show you here how the best way for me anyway to cut is to support uh, that foam that way the foam is not binding against the blade because as we try to force that blade down through the foam if it's laying flat on our work surface it's going to bind on the blade and that's going to make it more difficult to cut so holding the blade as vertical as I can possibly hold it we're going to start our cut and just very carefully make a few passes here and as long as you keep the angle the same uh, it should come out as a nice straight cut and there we go that's not bad so I'm just going to cut the other end off and uh, that way uh, we'll be ready to do a little test fit and make sure everything works uh, right because this is supposed to set just inside our frame now with our foam cut to the right size we need to go ahead and uh, check that fit so it is possible to sand uh, with some fine sandpaper this foam if it doesn't fit correctly but I think that looks pretty good so we're ready to continue on with the project so next up we're gonna lay uh, our parts back onto the uh, the foam here kind of try to figure out some sort of layout now we don't want the aircraft setting uh, symmetrically uh, I guess so I'm thinking maybe a little bit of groundwork over here in one corner would uh, help with the, uh, the the setting of this uh, aircraft so I'm just gonna go ahead and mark where I think I would like to trim out a little bit there and do some groundwork so once I got that marked uh, we'll just remove and safely stow away the model we shouldn't need it again until the end and we'll go ahead and put us a reference line here uh, where our terrain or dirt or mud is going to be and that kind of gives us uh, our reference point so I've decided that uh, we're going to do concrete so this is a ballpoint pen and I'm just going to use my metal ruler here to size up uh, and square off uh, our joints uh, between the pad sections that are poured for our concrete. Now I'm not pressing really hard, I'm pressing just hard enough to get uh, a little indentation there and then I kind of want to figure out uh, the size of our concrete squares. Here I'm just going to use three inches and uh, we'll take and mark that and we're just going to go ahead and lay out uh, a square pattern here for our concrete um, using the ballpoint pen and drawing these lines in and of course that's going to give us our seam uh, for uh, our concrete sections that are poured for our uh, simulated concrete tarmac kind of thing that we got going on here and we're just going to lay out a complete grid here so I do want to be consistent and so there's actually going to be a seam that's going to be way off in the corner here but that's going to keep everything really relative in size uh, you don't want to forget about these little bitty corners because that would kind of throw off uh, the visual uh, and as you can see some of it is just really really on the edge but don't forget about those little details there those little edges uh, because that's going to be important uh, for the overall look and that way we don't have something that kind of not matching <laughs> uh, not that it needs to I guess but uh, yeah so we're just going to set those up and get them marked
Now our ballpoint pen has done a pretty good job for us, but if you want it a little bit deeper, uh, I'm just going to use this sculpting tool here and just trace over those lines. Give it a little bit of pressure. We don't want to break through into the foam, so we're just going to really lightly uh, kind of rescore this uh, over top of those lines that we've already drawn. And that'll give it just a little bit more depth. So next up, uh, we're going to relieve a little bit of this foam uh, right where we want to put some terrain, which is going to be the uh, uh, dirt and mud. So I'm just going to score it a little bit here uh, for my initial cut, and then I'm going to come back in, and we're just going to slice out a little bit, uh, being careful not to cut into our concrete pad there. And so the ideal here is just to remove this little wedge and we'll get that out of the way. And now we just come in and very carefully trim out uh, about a two and a half, three millimeter section. Uh, that way we'll have a little area to lay in our terrain because it probably wouldn't be very high. Uh, on the edge of our tarmac anyway um, just in case aircraft <laughs> were to run off the edge of it you wouldn't want it uneven so there are some rough spots here and I think we're gonna go ahead and address that right now um, I'm gonna straighten it up a little bit uh, using uh, about a hundred and twenty grit uh, sandpaper here I'm just going to lay it flat against my work surface and I do put a little bit of card down or you can use cardboard to kind of uh, protect our cutting mat and also this will help collect some of those little fibers that are going to come off of that from, uh, from, from our sanding here. So, what we're going to use next, I'm supposed to be using a glove for this, <laughs> so I put one on, and uh, this is AK Terrain's uh, Muddy Ground for dioramas. Uh, it's an acrylic-based uh, product. Now, I've never used this before, so I don't know what to expect, so we'll go ahead and open it up and see what this thing is all about. Of course, here with hot hillbilly modeling, uh, there's a lot of firsts, so this is a first for me. As you can see, it's still sealed, and it looks quite runny on top. So I think we're going to try to mix this up a little bit. And uh, it's pretty much quite runny all the way through, so it's really, really pliable, uh, which is something that I wasn't quite expecting. So uh, we need to change our plan a little bit. So let me go ahead and uh, we're going to recap this and work on our diorama base again. Uh, we need to put a little dam around it because this stuff is so runny it'll just go right down the side uh, of our foam and we don't want that. So I'm just going to use this blue mask tape here. This is just painter's masking tape. And we're just going to apply that right around this edge where we want to lay in our terrain. And that should dam it up and keep it from running down the side. And with that securely in place, uh, we'll go back to our uh, terrain mud here. And just kind of like put that in, in that little recess that we cut out. Now, I don't know exactly how this is going to react. Uh, I mean, it's not going to eat through the foam because it's an acrylic. Uh, so I'm not worried about that and if you know anything about foam products you can't use uh, anything uh, that is solvent based you need to use water based type products which this is you can use water to thin it if you need it thinner but I think it's pretty thin as it is so uh, I'm just gonna kind of texture it a little bit and uh, uh, lay this stuff in and make sure that we get it filled up right next to the uh, masking tape uh, that we put in. And 
By reading the instructions, uh, it says that it takes 24 hours to dry, which is something I wasn't expecting. So it's going to take a, a little while to set up. So we'll have to leave our base until uh, much later, and we'll just come back to it after it's set up. Now, one of the things that I was not expecting was for it to draw in the way it did. So this product does have some shrinkage. And uh, it's not quite firmed up yet, even though I've waited 24 hours. But we're going to go ahead and remove our masking tape. And right here on the edge, it's still, uh, still a little tacky. So it's going to need some more drying time before I can straighten that edge up. Uh, and it is a little tacky, a little mushy, and I wouldn't have thought so since uh, it's not very thick. Um, it's only, uh, as you can see here, I've got the, the little ruler on it there, and it's about, what, three and a half or four millimeters or so uh, thick. So average, like three and a half millimeters. But it does need to dry some more, so we'll let it dry. Now once our acrylic is completely dry, I don't have to worry about messing up that, that terrain. What I have here is just a ball of aluminum foil, uh, nice and crinkled up. And we're just going to rub it over this surface right here, and that's going to kind of rough everything up for us a little bit. Adding a little bit of uh, texture to our poured concrete surface. And of course, the harder you press, the more little dents and dimples you get, and that looks pretty good. So I'll just go ahead and finish up uh, rolling out those other sections of our concrete. So next we need to straighten out that edge. Uh, it's kind of troublesome. I mean, probably most people wouldn't notice it, but I can see it, and if I can see it, you can see it. And so <laughs> we're going we're gonna to use this perfect plastic putty, which is a water-based putty. Uh, and just kind of build up that edge a little bit where it has pulled away and, and sunken in uh, from the shrinking during the drying process. And um, we're just going to make sure that we get everything filled in. Don't worry about the mess. Uh, that's kind of how things happen when you're, <laughs> when you're modeling. Uh, but this stuff cleans up really easy, so it's not going to be an issue with us. So while our perfect plastic putty is drying, and it's going to dry pretty quick since it's water-based, uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, uh, add in some, some cracks. And I'm just using my ballpoint pen here. And corners of poured concrete slabs tend to crack a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to add uh, a few uh, corner cracks here and there. and. Uh, now that the uh, perfect plastic putty is dry, uh, again, we're gonna come back in uh, with our uh, sander here and just smooth those out uh, so that they'll be uh, nice and flush with the surface. And you can also use a Q-tip or, or an earbud, whatever, whichever you prefer, to kind of clean up and blend in the top edge because it is a water-soluble putty. And so that's gonna work out really well for us, I think. So we need to paint this, and I think the best thing to do is to add a couple of these screws right in the middle of our, uh, our foam section here. That'll give us something to hold on to uh, while we're painting uh, and getting that base coat of paint down uh, on, our, on our terrain there. So we're ready to go. So we're going to go to the Vallejo Black, which is the same color that we used when we painted our figure. Uh, and this is a water-based acrylic paint. And I will use the uh, Vallejo Airbrush Thinner to thin it out for my airbrush. And we'll give everything a good solid base coat of that black. And as you can see there, everything is now unified in a nice black coat. So now we're going to go back to our base. Uh, this is the cardstock that was in the back of the picture frame. As you can see, it's slightly bowed. And there's only four little clips that holds it. So I'm going to kind of flip it in backwards compared to how it came out. 
That way our clips are in the bowed areas, kind of straightening it out and making it flush with, uh, with the inside of the picture frame. And it doesn't really matter because this is not going to be seen. And I'm also going to support that card. I, I need it nice and solid uh, for our next step, which is going to be to affix our foam to our uh, base. So uh, we're going to use this hot glue gun to uh, lay down some hot glue. Now these glue guns are really cheap. I think this one costs less than 10 bucks and it comes with four or five glue sticks. So uh, we're not spending tons of money here <laughs> to work on our base. But now these glue guns, these hot glue guns come in really handy uh, for uh, any project that you want to do. Uh, now we're going to place our foam in and just press it down nice and firm and those little bottles of paint that we put up underneath the card keeps us from pushing it out of the frame and we just got to wait a few seconds for that hot glue to cool down a little bit and that'll give it uh, a good adhesion there and that's kind of what we got going on that looks pretty good and I'm kind of happy with that and we won't need those paint bottles anymore So my intent here is to have the sides of this thing remain black. So since we're going to be painting uh, our concrete and our terrain, we do need to mask off the edges here uh, to uh, keep us a nice straight line around the top uh, of our uh, uh, vignette. <laughs> and uh, along with that, though, we don't want to be painting up the uh, the frame uh, we're gonna leave that black as well so I'm gonna cover that up with regular uh, painters masking tape here uh, this is the low tack purple stuff and we'll just attach that and that'll protect everything from any overspray so with everything protected uh, we're gonna start off here with pale gray because concrete is kind of a gray color and uh, I'm gonna thin that out for my airbrush uh, and this is what the mixture looks like uh, with it all mixed up. Now we're going to start spraying this in sections, uh, just like the concrete would have been poured in sections. And just slightly going around the edges. We don't want a, a uniform uh, surface, uh, so it's kind of a random modeled look that we got going on here. Uh, some lighter, some darker. And since we have that black base coat on there, that's going to give us some uh, uh, deviation in the color. And I am staying away as best I can uh, from the joints in our concrete. Uh, that way uh, those still remain fairly prominent. As you can see here, this is the end result of our little airbrush session there with the uh, uh, pale gray. And now I'm going to turn our attention to the mud or earth. And so we have these two browns here. The dark one being bark brown and um, warm brown uh, to uh, do our, our earth tone colors. And these are craft paints as well, just mixed up for the, the airbrush. So we'll start off with the darkest color first, and I'm just going to use a piece of cardboard here uh, to keep it off the uh, our concrete pad there, and we're just going to give it a good coat and get everything colored in uh, with our brown, and that's the color that uh, I think it's going to look pretty good. So next we're going to come in with our lighter brown, the warm brown. And we're just going to hit the highlights. That's just the high spots uh, on our terrain here. That's the light on high spots and dark on low spot kind of concept there. Uh, as mud or dirt starts to dry out, uh, of course, it's going to turn lighter at the top. So this will give us a little bit more contrast there uh, in our terrain. And as you can see, uh, the uh, that acrylic... Uh, ground cover that we put down it has cracks in it from the drying process which is good because 
ground actually cracks when it when it dries so uh, I'm kind of liking that look so we're not going to worry about filling it in or anything because that looks natural and here you can see uh, how our highlights have come out so I'm kind of uh, I kind of like that that looks pretty good so now we're going to work on our concrete. Now this is rainy day gray, a little bit lighter than the previous gray that I used, which uh, I, I thought I pressed play and it wasn't in camera or video mode. So <laughs> you can see I've already blotted on the darker gray, which is just standard gray. But the, the method that I use to do that is the one I'm using now. Uh, and this is just a stenciling brush that you can get at any craft store. Uh, and it, uh, we're kind of using it the same way that we would use, uh, say, sponge chipping. And you could do sponge chipping instead of using the brush on this. But uh, I'm going back over the pad here, uh, each one of the concrete pads, uh, kind of using this lighter gray to kind of tone down that darker gray in some areas. And it also adds a little bit more uh, different color contrast there. In our concrete pad uh, so there's not a lot of colors in here it's only uh, the black base and the pale gray on top then the regular gray stenciled on and then the uh, uh, rainy day gray uh, stenciled on over top of that so that's about all we need to do uh, I do come in later I didn't film it but I use a number two pencil to kind of re-emphasize uh, the joints in the concrete so now this is uh, static grass and I bought one of those varied uh, multi-packs so this is the darker grass uh, I'm going to use this static um, or try to use this static applicator and then we got our winter uh, two I'm going to kind of mix just a little bit of that in with it uh, kind of keep the tones kind of down a little bit. I don't want real bright grass on here because my intent is to not have to paint that grass. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for our adhesive for our grass, we're going to use this white glue or PVA glue. Uh, and I did mix it up with a little bit of water uh, to give it, uh, you know, so, so the glue's not so thick. Uh, so there we are. And of course, we need a little brush to apply that. So I don't want to cover up all the groundwork here. I just want to do probably grass in the high spots. And uh, we're going to apply our glue to it. And check, push the button, the batteries are good. So we're going to try this. Uh, you're just supposed to shake this over top of the area. And the static grass is supposed to stand up. But uh, I kind of had a fail here because it wasn't working right. I don't know why. Uh, just maybe the grass is too long I think this is four millimeter grass and it just really wasn't sticking up very well at all uh, so you know those kind of things happen it's no big deal uh, I do try to come in with my tweezers and uh, try to lift that grass a little bit so so much for the static grass applicator uh, I'm probably just doing something wrong <laughs> so I've decided just to use the tweezers and to get me some clumps of grass and we're just going to place it down uh, onto the glue and keep applying glue in the areas where we want it and we'll just keep sticking our grass in and, and kind of building it up uh, in those areas where we uh, want some grass and you know sometimes things don't work out exactly like you expect them to and this is definitely one of those times but uh, this is the first time I've used static grass so I need some more practice on that now once we get all of our grass in place and right the way we like it uh, as best we can uh, the next thing to do is going to be to remove all of our masking off of our base uh, and then go ahead and stage the model on it and take a look at our finished product. And so with that, I think we will call this build complete. Uh, my thoughts on the model kit itself is that it's a really good kit. Uh, the fit is phenomenal. 
uh, which of course we ran into a few problems with paint thickness when it came time to do our assemblies uh, because the parts are so well fitting. I uh, didn't have any issues with the kit truly uh, and in the end I think it looks pretty good. Uh, the color choices, mm, you guys be the judge on that. And as far as when it comes to the vignette or the display base, uh, yep, yeah, I learned a lot from doing this one. This is my first one, so <laughs> be kind in the comments. But do leave me some comments. I'd like to know uh, what you guys think of the build and how you liked how the aircraft came out. And don't be afraid of trying new things uh, just to see how it's going to work. Uh, because sometimes things just don't work and other times maybe we stumble on something that uh, uh, works really well. And so it's all about experimentation and enjoying the hobby. So enjoy your builds. So with that guys, um, special thanks to all my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I continue to uh, produce these videos and build these kits for you guys to see. And I hope you enjoyed this one uh, as much as I enjoyed it. And if you're not a subscriber, I uh, hope that maybe today I earned your subscription. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like. That would be great. And you guys, uh, until the next video, stay safe.